And good morning, Broncos country. Again, it is me, Scott Kennedy, your host for Broncos for Breakfast. I will be by myself this morning, so I could use your help in the chat. Uh, Nick is on assignment. He will be back tomorrow for Wednesday night's Mile High Insiders. And uh, we'll also be back on uh, youtube.com slash C slash Scott Kennedy to talk a little bit of Falcons, power rankings. You know, we get into all that stuff on that channel, not just Falcons, but draft and everything. Uh, let me bring in our Facebook communities here real quick, since I almost forgot to do that, as I'm already saying hello. And welcome in, everybody. This is Forging. <laughs> welcome in, everybody. This is Broncos for Breakfast. I am Scott Kennedy. Again, I am your host today. I'm going solo, so it's just me this morning and all of y'all. So thank you very much for being here. We had a a big show yesterday. Um, I'm not I'm not arrogant enough to think that was because of me and not Nick. Uh, but what I want to do is thank everybody for coming in. And if you happen to watch it on demand or whatnot, hit the uh, like subscribe button so you're getting those notifications. Every time we have a, a big show like that, I like to think we are able to keep some of our new viewers and turn new viewers into consistent viewers to become part of the community. Because the community of Broncos country is what makes this so much fun. Um, want to get into several things today. I'll say hello to the chat here in just a moment as people are already been, been pouring in. Um, we want to talk some Latavius Murray, uh, the new, new running back coming in. We'll talk some Javante Williams. We'll talk some Melvin Gordon. I wanted to talk some power rankings. Those are always out on Tuesday mornings and, and where the Broncos and the Colts happen to fit on the power rankings and how those have been shuffled. Uh, I want to hit the PFF grades. Uh, those came out yesterday afternoon after we did the show. Uh, and then I want to talk to injury reports for both teams and maybe get just a little bit of a preview for uh, for the Colts. But we'll, Nick and I will be back on Thursday morning, so we'll really dive into the game preview uh, Thursday morning. But I can't help but look forward just a little bit um, when we're talking about um, you know the next game. It's kind of what sports is all about. You know, the fun of the draft, the fun of free agency is who's next, who's next. Okay. Let's put this one behind us. Um, you know, in, in, uh, and let's see who's next. Well, you know, who's, who's first was diamond Rattler was first saying, boom, let's go. Appreciate you coming in, uh, coming in this morning. Um, Jeremy Sean says morning, Scott, hopefully you're feeling better because Broncos country is feeling worse a little bit better. I'll probably hit one of these, uh, sore throat lozenges here in just a little bit to keep from coughing and and choking but uh you know and uh and mr scott top botched job carrying the show yesterday yeah i really botched the falcons show yesterday that one was embarrassing i uh uh as i coughed i hit the mute button and didn't unmute so the only time i unmuted for about five minutes was to cough so yeah that was a botched job and and i know you meant notch but but thank you very much and and, and jeremy got the uh the the pun as well really botched that one dave uh, Kevin Grace says, good morning, Deacon Scott. One thing I can't figure out is why they don't work hard on finding a good O-line. And these guys are terrible. Morning Broncos country, uh, Denver Broncos for life. And Kevin, I, I don't know. Um, you know, sometimes you can, you can be so close to a situation, you know, when you're in the room every day, it's almost, you, you get the feeling that, that George Payton and the staff, you know, that they're pretty tight with this team. I've said before, especially when George Payton was able to convince Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick to sign those uh, contract extensions last year when you basically didn't have uh, a, a long-term answer at quarterback. Uh, your coach was going to be on the way out. He still convinced them to sign. And I know that conversation went something like this. We're, we're, don't worry. It, it's going to be handled. We're going to find you a quarterback. He probably didn't come out and say Vic Fangio was going to be fired, but everybody in the entire, you know, in Dove Valley knew that. Sometimes I wonder if the relationships play a part, um, you know, and some of it's also contracts, you know, you can't always just move on from different contracts you have. Graham Glasgow took a pay cut. You know, we said, I said going into last year that he wouldn't, he wouldn't play on that contract. He didn't. Um, I'll say that again this year. He won't play on the contract he has for 2023 either. He won't. Um, but, you know, the, the big one, I, I agree with you, Kevin. Um, you know, I don't want to, we talked a lot about this yesterday with the, uh, with the offensive line and there was problems in the, in the trenches last year. Well, those problems got addressed, uh, on the defensive side of the ball. DJ Jones was brought in. I know, I know Shelby Harris went out, but DJ Jones came in and, and for, 
for the interior line and for run stuffing and penetration, I think he's been an upgrade over what we saw over Shelby Harris last year. You needed edge help. Uh, you went and got edge help uh, in multiple ways, whether it was just moving Baron Browning up, um, drafting Nick Benito, signing Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb as was coming in healthy. Uh, so you got edge help, but on the offensive line, the only thing that was done to address the fact that you had three question marks on your offensive line was sign a gimpy right tackle, two gimpy right tackles. Uh, I, I said last year that I thought the one big uh, chink in the armor of, of George uh, Payton was that I didn't think he did enough based on the fact that the Broncos had a lot of salary cap available. We, we heard all last year, I have all this cap room available, all this cap room available. What what good is, is cap room when you've got holes? I'd, I'd rather have, I'd rather spend that money and fill the holes. So for me, the one chink in the armor was that he didn't do a good enough job in addressing the right tackle situation. Now, going into this year, you know, I, I could say that about a couple of positions. I could say that about left guard with Dalton Reisner was not good last year. I could say that about Lloyd Cushenberry. Lloyd Cushenberry was not good last year. Um, minors, you're expecting to be your starter. So I'm okay. I'm okay there. There's an injury. You're not expect Graham Glasgow was a serviceable backup. No, okay. I'm okay at right guard. That's unfortunate. But right tackle again is why, um, you know, and you know, I'll, I'll only say it once today. Um, but uh, you know, I, I would have used that spot on Abraham Lucas in a heartbeat for, for at right tackle instead of Nick Benito. Nick Benito. Um, so oh, you don't want to, you know, this is a team that's going to be competing. They've got playoff aspirations. They want a veteran, not a rookie. No, <laughs> you know, we've seen that a, a good rookie offensive lineman can hold his own. Uh, in this league uh, at, at guard center, right tackle. Uh, Spencer Brown was there for the bills last year at right tackle uh, rookie. And then uh, Abraham Lucas is playing phenomenally for the Seattle Seahawks this year uh, at right tackle. So he, he, he would be an upgrade uh, over both of them. So thank, thank you for the question, Kevin. Um, Sunny day is coming in with a smiley face of coffee, you know, speaking of coffee, cheers to everybody. Michaela asked me yesterday, she says, uh, are you a star Wars fan? When I, when I quoted Han Solo, never tell me the odds. Uh, yes, I am. This is my coffee is for closers mug. I take this into meetings, you know, like sales meetings. Eh, join us or die. <laughs> I always said this was the Nick Saban signing day mug. This is his recruiting mug. Jetty Splash coming in saying good morning. Dave Glassman with the heart. Appreciate you, Dave. Um, let me see. And, and uh, we'll hit on this one here real quick. As Jeremy Sean says, Hey, I'm excited about the Latavius Murray pickup. I think he can be a, about as good of a replacement as you can get. Um, he's, he's a serviceable pro for sure. Um, you know, you're not expecting, I don't need him to carry the load. You know, he is a big back. He is six foot three, 230 pounds. And if I can get him to bring some, some of that bully into, into the lineup, and you know run against some tired legs or give those body shots early and and have he's a very very different back uh than what you have now without javante williams um so i i do like that one uh, i do like that pickup again it was done quickly we were asked a lot in the chat yesterday on the shows will the broncos make a move yeah yes they will um, will they elevate somebody from the practice squad and then, but they, they've got two spots they've got to fill. They've got to fill Randy Gregory's spot. If he goes to IR, um, they've got, and then they've got to fill uh, Javante Williams spot. So they'll do something, even if it's temporary. Um, and that move was made for, for Latavius Murray, uh, the, uh, running back and, you know, running back is not a, it's like, well, we don't have time to, to learn the playbook. Yes, he does here. I'm in the huddle and say, this is whatever long string of characters they do to call a play. And Russell Wilson turns, turns to, uh, to Latavius Murray and says, that means pitch right tackle. That's it. You know, okay. Or they do another one and it's a pass play. It said you, you've got blitz pick up left side. Okay. Arrow route for you. That's it. You know, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to be hard. It's not going to be hard to integrate a running back into it. Belly dive, uh, toss sweep left, you know, cut, watch it, watch this. The cutback lane should be there. You know, this is he, he, if you need him to play, he could be ready to play. There's not a whole lot. He's going to have to learn when he's got his quarterback who can basically just say, this is your job on this play. And that's all he has to know. So that takes two seconds. Now that we've gotten, 
the problems of the play clock running down to one or zero on every snap, you can take a second to help explain to Latavius Murray if he's in there, this is your job on this play. That 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 shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Corey Johnson, he comes in. He says, just cut Gordon and get on with it. More fumbles in four games than most running back ones have in the entire season. Um, I, I it hit me kind of hit me yesterday, Corey, and I, I referred to to Melvin Gordon. I said we're in Chuck Knobloch territory right now, where this is so in his head that it's it's not even a physical thing anymore. It's it's and for those of you, you know, the 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 young folks or whoever doesn't doesn't watch baseball, I'll just uh, do a Google search on Chuck Knobloch second base throws. He got the yips. You know, and he couldn't throw the ball from second to first base. This is a major leaguer, former, you know, all star. This is a, a world champion, uh, second baseman with the Twins. And then when he gets to the Yankees, he got the yips. I feel that's where Melvin Gordon is right now. And you really, really saw it when they were backed up in their goal line. Shadow of the goalpost is, is on him. And he, when he took it, he was so hesitant. I'm like, oh God, they're going to get him for a safety. He was so hesitant. He was, he was so in his head at that point that this isn't physical anymore. Um, this is this is a mental uh, a mental hurdle that he's going to have to clear if if you're going to count on him at all. Because um, again, it's not you know hold on to the ball. I never thought of that. Thanks. Throw the ball to first. You know, <laughs> gee, did anybody ever tell that to Knobloch? Uh, this is this is in his uh, this is in his head. And uh, and Latavius might not play Thursday, but that's a hack decision. That's right. That's right. He he might not play. You've got a Zigbo that you can promote. Um, so you you'd have uh, Boone, Zigbo, and and Gordon as your three running backs. Um, keep it real, Denver. Uh, that that's right. I'm just saying if. Uh, if you did make that decision to play him, you could count on him for 10 to 15 plays without it being, you know, oh, he hasn't had time. Yes, he has. If he's in shape as a running back, it's time. You know, it's this, this isn't like a quarterback scripting an offense where he needs to know what every player is doing on every play. He needs to know four wide receiver trees and all the option routes that come out of it. No, this is running back. Hand him the ball and turn him loose or tell him he's got, you know, what to look for if he's in pass pro, you know, that's it. So I, uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, keep it real. <laughs> and Rashad, Rashad Smith says, what is the excuse today? What is the excuse today? Uh, I got a little bit of a sore throat. Nick isn't here, you know, uh, but, you know, no excuses. We're here. We're having a good day. But I, I know what you meant. The excuses for um, for the Denver Broncos. What are the excuses for the Denver Broncos? To be fair, Rashad, um not all of the bad things are excusable. Uh, but if I'm looking, if, if I fast forward and I say, okay, this team is now, you know, six and eight, Tim Patrick, Quinn Miners, Javante Williams, Justin Simmons, Randy Gregory. Uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's some legitimate injury excuses in here. You know, everybody faces injuries. Yeah, I get it. But it's, it's especially hard when you're integrating new offensive coordinator, new quarterback, new everything, new ownership, and the injury bug is just devastating you like that. Um, Lawrence coming in. Good morning, Lawrence. So what's up, guys? I don't think it's a good fit. We're lurking short term again when we know our problems at deep at running back. Lawrence, I want to I want to hit on this here real quick for you. Um, you when I see your comments and stuff, you almost sound like a you sound like a soccer fan um, where you can just sign people from anywhere in the world, you know, during a transfer window and bring in players to supplement your roster. And this is the NFL. It doesn't work like that. You know, you said it's been one day and no new signings. How come there haven't been any new signings, any new signings? Who are you going to sign them from? This is the NFL. This is the only league like it in the world. It's a monopoly. You, you can't just take, and it's a, it's a closed, uh, you know, there's rules about player transfers. The, the, the teams have all the power. There's, there aren't just players you can just go out and get mid-season. So, you know, you have to look short-term. You know, what what do you expect them to do right now to address the running back position? Trade? Who, who are you going to trade? Trade. Uh, what are you going to trade? Your first pick's a third-round pick. You're going to give up one of your four draft picks? You know, so uh, there, there's, you know, going back to Rashad saying, what's the excuse today? 
you have to look short term at the running back position. What do you expect them to do? Go to Alabama and go go sign a guy off of there. You know, go sign their guy that it doesn't work that way. You know, so it's 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 different. The personnel is different. Um, you can supplement your roster here and there, but it's with players like this during the season who aren't on another team or who are on a practice squad. And then everything else has to be done in the offseason. So just wanted to address that one real quick. Um, Holy Diver comes in and says, okay, what did you do with Nick? Trust me, Holy Diver. This is so much better when there's two of us, or at least when Nick's here. It's better for me when Nick's here. It's probably, and I know it's better for everybody else too. Um, but Nick went on a on a big uh, another big hike while the weather is still good, uh, and he and he can do that. So, um, Dylan, saying sup, Broncos country. Make sure you hit that like button on the way in and subscribe if you haven't already. And Dylan, thank you for being here. Um, keeping an eye on the chat. I get stuck, you know, up higher. And if someone comes in and needs to be moderated, it's, uh, it's, it's helpful to do that. As you can tell, this comment was at nine 35. So I'm working my way down the chat and can't see all the new things. So Dylan, thank you for your help this morning. And, um, official Andrew Furman X says, good morning, Scott Murray, better than Gordon. Listen, I, I posted the video of, um, <clears throat> of Melvin Gordon, Yesterday, if you haven't seen it, it went pretty viral. It's got about 40,000 views on, on the Mile High Huddle YouTube channel of him walking out. And he's upset. You know, I, I feel for the human being. Um, but he's a professional. He knows what comes with the territory. That's one of the reasons why he's upset. He's let his teammates down. Um, his career is in jeopardy right now. And he's upset. I feel for the human being, but he is a professional. This comes with the territory. When you don't deliver, your job is in danger. Uh, he is extremely well paid. He's made you know eight figures worth of money over the last five or six years from the Denver Broncos alone. Um, it is a high risk, high reward type of uh, profession. I feel for the human being, but I don't want him carrying the ball for the Denver Broncos anymore. Um, it's it's time to move on. It's in his head. Maybe he can pick up somewhere else and and bounce back and move on and just flush all that bad juju. Maybe that's what he needs. Uh, but you know, four fumbles on 37 carries. And and frankly, one of those that he recovered, I swear he fumbled again on that pass. He catches a pass, fumbles, falls on it, and as he's like getting up, it's punched out again before the ball play had even completely been blown dead. I'm like, he fumbled again. It's twice in one penalty. You know, it's it, like I said, he's Chuck Knobloch at this point. Uh, Glenn Harris says, morning, Scott. Do we get the win on Thursday? Honest thoughts. You know, this is a decent transition onto this one. Uh, if I'm looking at maybe the two two of the most disappointing teams in the, in the AFC, I'm coming Denver Broncos and Indianapolis Colts, two teams that had very good playoff aspirations that are right now teetering on the brink of disaster. Um, the Las Vegas Raiders could probably be put in that same vein, uh, as a team that, you know, have not met expectations, but I know the Colts are there and I know the Broncos are there. The big difference right now with the Broncos is the Broncos are still new. Okay. They feel like we haven't clicked. We're still going to be on the ascendancy injuries and all this will come together and we will get better. Our coaches will improve. Our timing will improve. Everything will get better. The Colts are stale. The Colts are stagnant. The Colts brought all of this in with a coach they've already had who hasn't won anything. And they are turning. That 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 team is turning on the on the Colts. The Colts are tuning out Frank Reich. Um, the fans are turning on the team. The uh, beat writers, I said this before, you can tell when it's about over, when the sharks start circling, when the local beat writers start writing negative articles about the player, the teams that they cover, because they know they're no longer going to need that relationship. They, the, the, the local press is an extension of the team itself. I, I need access to Frank Reich. I need access to the offensive coordinator in order to get any information so I can get my quotes. I need to maintain that relationship. As soon as they can tell that those guys are on their way out, their tone turns. They don't need that access anymore because it's going to be a new set of guys. 
it's happened. It's happened. It's 10 times worse in politics that way, where the people you cover are the people you depend on because it's 10 times worse because there's no, there's, there is no change. There's, there's no term limits. So it's constantly that symbiotic relationship where they're basically press and profession are working together. Uh, but that's a whole different story, but it absolutely works like that in sports too. And you can tell when they start to turn, it's, it's turning. This team's ready to quit. They haven't quite given up yet. They're ready to quit. Um, I, you never say never, but I, I think that the Colts are ready to pack it in and Denver can give them a push on Thursday and we'll get more into the matchups and stuff. And I'll talk a little bit about the injury reports. Um, before we get out of here. And let me see. K-Hop says, I hope, you know, as far as do, uh, addressing the offensive line, I hope Billy Turner and Quinn Miners. Uh, Billy Turner was limited again on the official report. Loch Ness Billy, um, Billy the Ghost. I'll believe him when I see him. And Quinn Miners, hamstrings. <sighs> I said last year when... Uh, who did their hamstring early in the season? Um, was it Ojemudia? I said that, you know, the, the hamstrings are like voodoo. They're, they're almost as bad as knee injuries. They can be minor or they can just linger all season and they're completely being aggravated. Um, Richard uh, coming in from across a pond. He says, how are the Owen line? How bad are the offensive and defensive line? Can it be fixed? I don't think the defensive line's that bad. I really don't. I think the defensive line personnel wise is in pretty good shape. Offensive line, can it be fixed this year? Uh, what are some things you might want to try? I might want to try Glasgow at center. Um, I, I would. I think it's time to to change Cushenberry. Uh, will that happen? I don't know. The Glasgow at center and Wattenberg at guard was a decent pairing in the preseason. Again, that's preseason. You're going against second and third team guys. Um, but that was a decent pairing in the preseason. Glasgow at guard hasn't been very good. Uh, Cushenberry at center has been pretty poor. Reisner at guard has been pretty poor. Um, Fleming's been okay. Fleming's been okay at right tackle. Bowles has been okay. Um, do you have internal options in order to shake things up? I think you do. Will you? I don't know, Richard. That's that's what we'll find out. Um it would be nice to see. Uh, it would be nice to see a little bit of a shake, shake up, some accountability there, um, with some you know some healthy competition. Again, uh, you know, I, I would probably I would probably start talking about Graham Glasgow at at center and and then thinking about making a move at guard, um, making a, a move as guard at well as well. Crimson Wolf coming in says, Morning, Scott. The Broncos have a playoff roster, but not a Super Bowl roster, in my opinion. We need time to develop our identity in depth. What's your opinion? Great show. Um, the roster itself, thank you for the comment, Crimson, coming in on YouTube. Um, the playoff roster, I absolutely agree with, if you've got the whole roster. Right now, it's starting to get thin. Um, you know, when we start talking about, you know, who are your 10 to 15 most important players on this team, would Justin Simmons be on that list? Yeah. Would um, would Tim Patrick have been on that list? Yes. Javante Williams? Absolutely. He was a lot of people's picks for offensive uh, player of the year. I, probably mine. Offensive player of the year, you know, not including Russell Wilson. Um, was Randy Gregory on that list? Yeah, he is. Um, was Quinn Miners on that list? Maybe. And we haven't seen him at all. Um so again, we always say the same thing over and over again. It's like, how can this go wrong? And the easy answer is injuries. We saw a healthy roster to begin the season. And we saw a, a team that wasn't ready for prime time yet. Um, needed a couple weeks. We can talk all the preseason we want. That's what preseason is for. Um, it's a long season. Um, kind of would have been nice if you're going to lose all these guys anyway. To, to come out swinging and, and firing, you know, at least closer to 100% against the Seattle Seahawks and maybe get that win um, instead of learning on the fly in week one and blowing that game. So let's see. Uh, Keith talking about guys coming in, you know, Billy Turner, Ben Braden, and brought back Cam Fleming. 
not exactly murderer's row on the offensive line, is it, Keith? And in Tom Compton as well. Um, you have, you had, you have uh, free agent money and flexibility. I just think you could have done better. Uh, I've said it for two years now. I think you could have done. I think you could have done better. Uh, there was too much faith given in the fact that these guys struggled under Fangio. It was the wrong type of scheme. I need guys that are scheme de- independent. I, I need guys that are going to be good players, no matter what scheme you put them in. If they're scheme dependent, they're not good enough. They're they're just they're not good enough. Oh, he can't play in the scheme. Why not? This is a bigger, faster, stronger league. If you are big, fast, strong, and quick, scheme doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Jimmys and Joes, not X's and O's. You don't have the Jimmys and Joes. You can't scheme around. What they say in the old movie, Christine, you can't polish a turd. Now that's harsh. I don't mean it like that, but you, 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 you can't scheme around deficiencies when you've got too many of them, you know, I can hide one guy. I can, I can, I can help him. I can run the other direction, but when I've got three or four questions on my offensive line, if not five, honestly, that's a problem. That is a problem, Keith. Um, yeah, keep it real. It says now y'all want a Glasgow starting center. That would have been a disaster. Uh, as opposed to what though? Keep it real. You know, like I said, Glasgow played decent at center in the in the preseason, so would have been a disaster. It is a disaster <laughs> at center. It, it is. It's been a disaster for two seasons. So you're, that's not a that's not a good enough sales pitch. I, I saw Glasgow at center in the preseason, and he played it better than Cushenberry. Levels of disaster is uh kind of. Kind of like levels of elite. I'm not going to argue them. I don't think it's a great option either. What would have been a really good option is if Wattenberg had come in and been ready to play right away. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Let me move on down here. This looks like a new name. Ray Tito uh, coming in. He says, any idea how long Randy will be out for? Um, said it's just a couple weeks, possibly. Um, you know, Hopefully he won't need to go uh, a stint on the IR. I don't think they have IR'd him. Um, I don't think they've IR'd him yet. He's he's so far he's listed as a, a did not practice, uh, did not participate yesterday. And I meant to look that up, but I didn't think they had. I didn't remember hearing that. Um, but uh, could be a couple weeks. Could be a couple weeks for Randy Gregory. So it's a good chance for uh, Baron Browning. You know he was moved to edge, needed some depth there, and it's a good chance for Benito to to step up as well. Uh, blank nine one six. We can put whatever quarterback we want behind this crappy line, and the results will be the same. Not necessarily. Um, you know, Russell Wilson had a good game. He he had a, he had a decent game. He kept the team in it uh, for the most part. And you know, if not for a a uh, a fumble six, <laughs> you could probably come up with it. instead of a pick six an fu six or something. You could probably come up with an interesting. Uh, short term for that, then then the the Broncos are probably sitting at three and one, uh, and, and beat the Raiders. So, I um, I think Russell Wilson played decent. He ran. He was the team's leading rusher. A uh, couple of touchdowns. He played well. Um, I wouldn't want to put somebody, you know, just anybody behind that offensive line right now. Um, sh- 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 let me see. Coming on down. Brad D says, good morning, Scott. And thank you. Have to watch later. Peace. We'll appreciate you coming in, Brad. Uh, leave us a comment. We had a bunch of comments, um, yesterday. There's about 45, 46. I did read through them all. Um, did, did th- read through all the comments yesterday. So if you have anything specifically for me, uh, you know, ask a question, I'll, I'll be happy to answer Miguel coming in. Good morning, Miguel, Miguel Santi, Steve on Dave on, um, good morning, Miguel. And Joe Perez says, what's your prediction for the rest of the season? Um, I think I was maybe 11, 10 years old when Rocky three came out. And I cannot for 40 years later, cannot hear a prediction without thinking of club of rang saying pain. Um, so my prediction is pain. No, what's your prediction for the rest of the season? Man, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's hard to look past and think where you are right now and where you could be. 
you know, as this team step up, can you survive the loss of Javante Williams? You can, you, you absolutely can. Um, but the injuries at the wide receiver right now, the loss of Tim Patrick right now weighs heavily more heavily on me than the loss of Javante Williams for me right now. Uh, I, I think you're missing him more than you will miss a running back as good as Javante is. I think you were missing him. Oh, and one other player, you know, that, that hasn't been injured, but might as well have been that you were counting on. Okay. This could be his year to step up. I know I was Albert Okawebenau. He had one snap. He had one snap, according to Pro Football Focus, against the Raiders. One. And this this is a guy that is just eaten up with physical ability. And it's just, it's it's not coming together for him. And uh, he has been relegated to the bench. You know, meanwhile, let me see. Uh, offense, um, Eric Saubert had 41 snaps. Eric Tomlinson had 24. And according to PFF, Albert Okawebenam was in for one snap and had one run block. Uh, that was it. That's a problem. You know, so in essence, you lost, you know, Noah Fant and Albert Okawebenam from last year's team. What was that? 80 catches as well. Tim Patrick without replacing him. Greg Dulcich. Hello. Where are you? Are you, you know, he he's eligible to come off IR after this week. Will he? It'll be nice. It'll be a long week. Maybe, maybe he can. Uh, Mike Mayfield says, we've had Gordon for two or three years. Fumble history. Cut and let's move on. Uh, Murray Boone Ozigbo. Yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't be totally surprised. And I would expect, um, I, I wouldn't be, to- I don't think it's going to happen, but I wouldn't be totally surprised. One more subpar game and it could be curtains for him. Um, but this, this could be the last chance, you know, it it really could, you know, four fumbles, 37 carries. Um, you know, like I said, I feel for the human being, but he is, he is a professional, you know, these aren't, these aren't amateurs out here doing it for the love of the game. This is, this is your job and you're, you're not doing it. He knows that he knows that, you know, this is, I'm not telling anything he doesn't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's a harsh reality. Um, like I said, I feel for the human being, but I, I, I don't want him carrying the football for the Denver Broncos anymore. Um, let me see. <laughs> Aki Dragon come in and he says, sadly, both Puffs and Angel Soft withdrew their sponsorship offers to the Broncos saying this team was too soft. You know, we talked a little bit about that um, yesterday, Aki Dragon, just saying, you know, Coach Chris came in yesterday with a, a super talking about, you know, seven years of bad football, I'm worn out. And I'm like, you said a mouthful there. It is seven years of bad football. It was last year getting absolutely annihilated in the trenches. That didn't just turn around overnight. Uh, There's been a lot of good progress. This team is better than it was last year. There's good pieces there. There's reason for optimism, but it didn't, it's not going to just turn around uh, overnight. Let me see here. Biggie Bronco says, go watch some tape on Steph, uh, Stefan Gilmore. He went up against 6'4 wide receiver, and it was a 50-50 ball, and he's only 5'8 and took it from him. And Stephon Gilmore is an all-pro, uh, multiple-time all-pro. And, um, you know, I've always said, you know, as far as the, the corners go, and for those of you listening after, I'm going to – sorry, I'm going to do a visual here, is I don't have to beat you to the high point. I just have to make sure you don't bring the ball in. So, you know, if I can get to your elbow and keep you and keep your hands separated, then I should be able to pass breakup. I don't have to beat you to the ball. I just have to make sure you don't catch it. And he does a really good job of getting in between, getting in between the hands. And, and, and you know, he's quick, best athletes in the world are NFL cornerbacks. And, uh, you know, he has to he has to do some of that. I don't think he's only 5'8", though. I feel like he's a, a little bit bigger than that. Um, but still, I get your point. You know, I, I get your point. And, and I've told you all before, one of my biases is I love the big receivers. I love them. Um, I love Cortland Sutton and his length and his ability to be thrown open as opposed to the smaller guys, especially on the outside. Uh, let me see. Um, Ryan Slavik on a common thought here. Uh, we need an offensive line badly, possibly a younger safety to take over Kareem Jackson and also maybe get a true number one running back due to how severe Javante's injury is when the season is over. Ryan, that's the scary part. I agree with you uh, on 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 almost all of those. Um, you thought you had the safety. You know, I, we were kind of expecting Justin Simmons and Caden Stearns 
with Kareem Jackson maybe backing him up. Injury to Justin Simmons changes things. Um, that the injuries again change things, and it's going to be in more. It's going to be more than a year. I, I think we won't see the Javante Williams if we do see him again. The Javante Williams, what I mean, not just see him, you know, in a, in uniform and playing again, but if we see a, a semblance of what we have come to know and love out of Javante Williams, I don't think it's going to be in 2023. I think it's going to be in 2024. Uh, now all of a sudden you're in market for running back too. Um, I agree. And Ryan, I do think you can improve. You've got a, what is it? Is it two? Let me look up Tankathon real quick. Uh, is it two third round picks? Let me see. Uh, Denver Broncos. Yeah. 73 and 74 are your third round picks right now. Um, you can upgrade the interior offensive line with 73 and 74. Um, without a doubt uh, you can you can upgrade it with you can hit on both of those you can hit on one of them you can take two players and hit on one of them how much better would this line be if you just got a you know a really good interior lineman just one of them would improve massively and then you get miners back okay i get a i get a another starting guard and, and i get a, i get another starting guard at left guard and miners comes back and then i go sign a four million dollar good professional mid-level center okay those are all okay those are you can do all those things you can you can you can do all those things and running backs are cheap they they are cheap it's one of the reasons i've said that you know that you're you're dropping two and a half million dollars a year on gordon and mike boone um you don't you don't have to do that to be able to get similar type of production uh i see practice squad guys come up and do just as good as what we've seen from either of those two so far. And yes, I get it. You know, injuries, insurance. No, it's, it's, you don't need to spend that type of money on those positions. I looked it up, you know, cause I've been, I've been complaining about Mike Boone's contract since I started this a year ago because he, he doesn't play much. Yeah. You know, he, there were, I think out of the number two running backs, there was only like seven number two running backs in the entire NFL that are paid more than him. And some teams don't have a number one that are paid more than him. This is your number three. So I get the insurance angle, but you don't need to pay. You're, you're paying too high a premium for your insurance. Here, let me see. Uh, coming down to Lorenzo. Lorenzo on Facebook. Appreciate you coming in. Why isn't Hamler playing more than Hinton? Um, Hamler's still working his way back. You know, he's, he's working his way back to full fitness. Coming off that devastating knee injury. Hello, you just heard me talk about Javante Williams. Uh, KJ Hamler could be one of those guys where towards the back half of the season, he's 100%. He, he's not there yet. He's not there yet. So uh, let me see how many snaps he had, though. If I look at, he had 30 snaps and Hinton, I don't think Hinton had 30. Let me see. Now I can't find Hinton had 30 for Hinton and oh, Hamler had four. So, you know, Hamler made a big impact uh, and hopefully he'll get to see more as he's uh, as he's getting there it says um, Lauren Travera says a younger running back at least that's what we needed and we got another Viking X we've become the Vikings uh, a younger running back you know the the good young running backs aren't available that that's what it boils down to you know good run, young running backs aren't available uh, I mentioned one you know off a of practice squad um, Caleb Huntley had a good game. He was elevated off the Falcons, ran really hard. They signed him to the 53. They, they, they fixed that error. Um, you know, so you can, you can get those guys, but anybody that you're signing now would be to a one-year deal. You're not, you're not signing anybody. You're not going and finding a, a running back who's 23 years old and signing him to a five-year contract. It's a one-year deal regardless. So it's a, it's a, it's a stop gap no matter what this time of year let me see here <laughs> jeremy sean says i honestly think terrell davis could still give us 10 carries maybe maybe um <laughs> jeremy sean would you would you say he dropped the ball had did peyton drop the ball on the offensive line um i think so you know i think so again and i, I i've got the i've got the privilege of being able to do this in hindsight um you know and Again, I, I try and, and stay intellectually honest with, with y'all. 
And if I miss, I miss. And I, I'm not going to go back and look at the the entire uh, draft and say, oh, man, so-and-so was taken in the fifth round. You could have had him. No, 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 no. If you were singing the praises of a guy in the fifth round, okay, that's one thing. Then stick to that guy. But there's going to be a free agent. You know, the, the, It's one of the reasons y'all have heard me say I, the whole best player available thing to me kind of rankles my nerves a little bit because the odds are somebody drafted later is going to be a better player. That's just human nature. Um, but as far as the, the position of need and the player available, uh, I was a big fan of Abe Lucas at that pick. I will stick to that. I'm not going to go past that one. I said Abe Lucas and Travis Jones, uh, big nose guard, uh, who was who had some knee questions, who had some some injury questions. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna regrade myself um, with the benefit of hindsight. If I miss, I miss. You know, y'all were talking Pat Sertan and Justin Fields. I wanted Justin Fields at that pick, um, and if he turns out to be a bust. So be it. I'll say I, I will miss. However, I did say, you know, if you're taking a cornerback, you're going to be really, really happy with Pat Sertan. Brad D says, hello, Alaska, Montana here. Let me see. Let me come on down the chat just a little bit. Uh, Benjamin Flores says, comes in. Says, good morning, Scott. Our boy's going to come in strong. Going to come back strong and pissed off and win one Thursday for Javante. Um, very possible, very possible. Um, KB says, good morning, Scott. Any news on Justin Simmons? He was on, he was on the IR, so he would be eligible to come off week after next. So they are him after the first week, I believe after the Seahawks game. So he would miss a minimum of four more games. So we just finished four weeks. So yeah, these guys are eligible to, to come off after five weeks sorry i'm 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 getting my my short week is is messing with my my math a little bit so the guys like dulcich and whatnot should be eligible to come off you know someone in the chat help me out on that i feel like if they started on ir they should be able to come off this week and simmons should be available um after this week uh is billy turner the new Jawan james uh, luckily, he wasn't near the cost. So, you know, I would say the risk reward here was very, very different. You know, what was Billy Turner? And again, if you're going to miss, at least miss on a guy, you're only paying a, a million dollars. But let me see. Denver Broncos on spot rack. Um, I feel like Billy Turner. Yeah, Billy Turner's cap hit is 2.2. You know, so no, I'm not going to go as far to say Juwan James because you spent a lot, a lot of money on him. Um, Gary Leeds Palmer coming in saying, uh, good morning, Scott. Just got here, but I like the way you think. I well, appreciate it, Gary. Appreciate the way you are here. See, the key for me is just picking out the right voice. There's so many of them in my head that I have to just try and listen to the right one. I get a lot of advice in my head and then picking out the right one. Uh, and as Jeremy says, Jawan James is in a class by himself. Um, that's for sure. Salvi Nation's coming in. Says, uh, good morning. Hey, Salvi Nation. Good morning to you. Um, and Scott Windmiller comes in. He says, uh, who should the Broncos look into as getting another running back? Um, need it, they needed a body that they could probably bring in. That's why you go for a veteran. Um, now you can take a little bit more time and maybe see if there's someone on a on a uh on a practice squad or whatnot that you can, you can feel good about. Um, you know, you don't want to give up any, any draft, any draft capital. Like I said, you've only got, you've got five picks right now. I don't even want to give up my seventh rounder, my, my number two twenty two. right now in draft picks. I've got 73, 74, 114, 145, and two twenty two. That's two thirds, a fourth, a fifth, and a seventh. Do you, do you want to give up any one of those five for a, for a running back right now? I don't think I would. I, I definitely think um, I would want to to give those out. Um, Salvi comes in real quick and says, do you think Hackett will finish the season as Denver's head coach? Um, you know, since we're 45 in, it's been a great show. Thanks, everybody. It's been super busy this morning. Um, sorry if I'm not getting to, to everybody's comments. Um, let me hit on this real quick since I put it in the topic, the, the NFL power rankings. Uh, I, I usually typically just look at ESPN and NFL's, NFL.com's, and I, I found myself 
kind of agreeing through the season more with Dan Hansis of NFL.com and his methodology. One, he at least puts a name to it. The other one says like ESPN NFL Nation. Um, but Denver Broncos have dropped two spots to, to number 16. Let me drop that in the chat for everybody here real quick. I like to do that if I'm going to reference them. I want to give them some love. And you can uh, you can you can click on those if you want to. Um, he says Russell Wilson is starting to look more like his old self. Uh, the problem is is um, the defense made Josh Jacobs look like Bo Jackson, Melvin Gordon, and then the injuries is is a bit of a problem. Um, and at sixteen, does team feel like? <clears throat> excuse me. Does this feel? Does this team feel like they're on the upswing right now? You go three and two. Um, you know what we say the first half of this the first half of the the schedule appeared to be the easier half of the schedule. You come out of this three and two. Um, you know, if your first eight games, you're sitting at five and three, you're still in it. Get some guys healthy, Miners, Gregory, Simmons. Um, you're not getting Javante Williams and Tim Patrick back. Uh, but will he finish the season? Yes. Uh he'll finish the season as head coach. Um He's looked more like a head coach the last couple of weeks. If, if if we were still seeing the same comedy of errors week one and two that we saw in, in three and four, I'd, I'd have more questions. But he's it's coming together for him. The game's slowing down. You hear that a lot about players. The game is slowing uh, down for him. But he's not going to uh, to lose his job midseason unless there's a com- something completely unforeseeable besides losing games. Let me see here as we come down. So, uh, oh, and, and then on ESPN's ESPN had the Broncos at 17. Uh, they've been a bit higher on the Broncos, so they punished them more for the loss. Uh, they have them going down to uh, from 12 down to 17. And their theme for their theme this week is they, they choose a new theme every week was the defense. What can the defense do better? And they say nickel package. Uh, they're getting run on in the nickel package. Well, duh. Um, you know, they, they want to have a little bit better. That said, I think K1 Williams has done a, be- a very good job. But I mentioned yesterday, this is where you were missing Justin Simmons. Um, you, the the uh, Jonas Griffith had a poor game. Josie Jewell was hot and cold. Uh, some of those big runs that went from five to 10 plus, I think Justin Simmons could have helped clean up. So this was a game where I, I feel like you really – really miss Justin Simmons and your nickel package was hurting. Well, your pro bowl safety was out. It has been out. So it'll be good to, to get him back. Uh, Dom Haramio coming in. I think good morning, Scott and Broncos country still got a sore taste in my mouth. Hopefully we can win Thursday night. Yeah. Again, this Colts team is, is ripe for the picking, uh, right for the picking. I knew Ethan, Ethan and, and Jeremy Sean would definitely get, uh, you know, the pain reference club or Lang prediction pain. Um, for sure. So as you can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm just catching, I'm, I'm catching up. I'm about, um, two after the, uh, the hour on the chat. So I worked my way down. Been a great chat today. Appreciate everybody for being here. Uh, Mark Weisenfeld says, good morning, Scott. I read that in five series in the third, uh, first down results were one zero one, one and minus one yards. I understand that Hackett calls the plays, but does Russell have free reign to audible change of place? Thank you. Um, Domidar in Boulder, uh, Domidar. Well, anyway, um, it was the, the third quarter was bad. Um, it, it was, I, I said, they got their three and outs instead of the first quarter. They got them in the third quarter. This was the first game you had converted a third down in the first quarter. It took four games to convert a third down in the first quarter, come out in the third quarter. And you went, you know, three, three and outs in, in, putting your stress on your defense. You want to know why you can't stop the run in the fourth quarter. Cause you're facing too many damn plays. They ran twice as many running plays against you. We, you, you know, we talk about that all the time. Those running plays, especially with a guy like Jacobs are body blows. They, 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 you know, it's like, Oh, I'm going to get those body blows. And by the fourth quarter, your guard comes down. You're not going to hit me in the ribs anymore. Well, your chin's wide open, you know? So that starts, it starts happening like that. Um, You've got to be able to get some help. I don't put all the blame. We're talking about the defensive line. It was a question earlier, the offensive line and defensive line. I don't put all the blame on the defense. The offense has to pick you up. The, the, the game against the 49ers is not sustainable. 
all of those three and outs is not sustainable. You can't expect your defense to and your special teams to pin the team inside the five and keep giving you in the ball and you just keep giving it right back to them. That is not sustainable. The defense in this league cannot hold up that long. So the offense has to be more consistent. On the whole, the offense moved the ball. You know, if I look at the final stats, the offense moved the ball, scored some points, had turnovers that hurt, but they were inconsistent. It was boom or bust. And, you know, just flipping the field, giving your giving your defense a breather, um, you know, getting some first downs, that it, it, it makes a difference. So, Mark, the, you're absolutely right. The offense has to pull its weight um, a little bit more. Um, and Melvin Gordon has nine lives. It seems, um, you guys have seen the phrase, you know, find somebody who looks at you the way I kind of feel like that's, that's how this is. Find somebody who looks at the way that Denver Broncos look at Melvin Gordon. He has, uh, I'd be interested to know what those conversations were like in the off season because he doesn't sign right away. You know, he wasn't brought back right away. He tested the free agent market and then came back on a cut rate deal, uh, incentive laden deal. So that's, uh, that is, what was that conversation like? And he knew he's like, listen, I know I'm coming in, you know, I, I see myself as a one, um, but I think they want Javante Williams to be the number one. They, they do. And frankly, when this game started, I felt like the number two in was Mike Boone. Um, Injuries change things. Injuries change things. Um, so we'll see. Salvi Nation comes in. Why do you think the rookies are not playing? Is something wrong with them? Uh, Benito is a situational guy who was behind better players. Um, he was a 64th overall pick who was his light in the britches. And if I've got pass rush now and they're not worn out, I'd rather have Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb, and Baron Browning. That means at best, Nick Benito is the fourth guy in with Browning uh, with uh, Gregory out that moves him up a rung that moves him up a rung. So we'll see, we'll see Nick Benito Dulcich has been hurt. We've seen lots. Oh goodness. Have we seen lots of Montreal Washington? Boy, is he fun to watch return punts? Um, let's see. Uh, Ozarike. We haven't seen a ton of him, but again, I think the defensive line has been okay. I'm, I'm not too worried about him. He was a, he was a fifth round pick on the in interior line. That's not, uh, a recipe for playing early. And again, you know, you, you, you were drafting late. You didn't have high draft choices. Yes. You had a second you did. Um, but edge second round edge wrestlers that are almost third rounders. They're not being counted on to play right away. He wasn't being counted on to play right away. He was a developmental type of player. Um, coming in at 10 Oh four for me. I'm hoping Dylan was still here as we saw the chat bots. So thank you, Dylan. It's exactly what I was talking about. It takes me 20 minutes to scroll down and find them. So thank you very much. Um, Gary Leeds Palmer says, I hope it's only coach talk, but Hackett is still sounding high on Gordon. Um, let me play this video here for you real quick. Not share screen, Scott. Uh, I want to play this one real quick. Broncos, press videos. And this was Nathaniel Hackett on the fumbles. Melvin's fumble. When you have a sudden change like that, where you're driving and it turns into a touchdown the other way, how how much did you feel like that was kind of a, the, the swing in the game? Yeah, I mean, obviously, anytime you know you turn the ball over, it's it's a big swing, and then that leading to a touchdown or, or on the same recovery is obviously uh, rough. But I really loved how the guys battled. You know, they stayed in it. You know, that could, they could have definitely gone down in the tank, and uh, they didn't. We still had a chance there at the end, got it down to uh, a field goal game uh, there at the end. And, I mean, in the end, that's what you're asking from your team. I mean, all those things, they do happen, and, and that's a hard way to uh, to win games whenever you lose the turnover differential and it being a score. But they battled back, and I thought that was really good. Nate, where's just your trust level with Melvin right now? We didn't see him much before that fumble, and then obviously we didn't see him much after the fumble either. Yeah, you know, I mean, in the end, you can't put the ball on the ground. There it is. He didn't answer the question at first. He deflected. Where's your trust level? You can't put the ball on the ground. So, Gary, I think he was ready to be done with him, too. I mean, who, who has more to lose right now than Melvin Gordon? Nathaniel Hackett. Nathaniel Hackett does. He's at the beginning of his career. Uh, you know, and he's like, listen, I put my trust in you, and, and my God, you're killing me. 
you're, you're, you're killing me smalls. Um, so I, I think, you know, he's got to build him back up. You know, if, if you don't have a replacement ready for him, you, you're going to need him. So you, you've got to build him back up. He can't just come out and say, you know, you expect him to say positive things, but immediately after the game, his gut reaction was you can't put the ball on the ground. Uh, C. Patrick Havener, appreciate you coming with the stars, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, let me see here. And Philip Mon, uh, Montoya says, Bulls has been good this year. Wilson has run under pressure so many times this year and held onto the ball way too long. Um, a lot of the sacks I've seen coming from the left side of the line, I agree with Philip on this one. Uh, I've seen, you know, five step drops, one, two, three, four, five, plant that foot one, two, and the ball's still in his hand. The ball's got to come out right there. You know, you, you've done your job. If you give them a five step drop and a two count, you've, you've done your job as an offensive lineman. After that, it's up to the quarterback to, uh, to get rid of it, um, to get rid of it for sure. So I'm with you on that one, Philip. I agree. Let me see. Um, here we go. Coming up. Jeremy Sean says, talking about dropping the ball. Would you say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Peyton thought he solved right tackle by committee and he obviously did not. Um, you know, the old saying about quarterbacks, if you got two, you don't have one. Uh, it's more true in, in, than ever in the NFL, you know, do you, right tackle by committee. That sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> I want one. I want one right tackle that I can count on. And then some depth, obviously. Um, Facebook user coming in saying good morning from Sandy Hook, Connecticut. Go Broncos. Go Broncos. Uh, appreciate you joining us. And then, uh, you know, talking about the guys that should be eligible coming in after the, the, the Colts game, talking about the players on IR. So it'll be interesting to hear, uh, you know, Dulcich again, you don't, you don't have anybody who you don't have a pass catching tight end right now. And, Albert Okawaben on played one snap. Your tight ends right now are Saubert and Tomlinson. Those aren't solutions. So you did spend a third round pick on a guy, on Greg Dulcich. So, you know, it's important that he then comes in and contributes. How much he can help. You know, where are you looking? Where are you looking to improve? How can this team get better internally? There's one. There's one that can come back and help you. He can come in and be a weapon in the slot over the middle of the field as an outlet that you don't have right now. Um, take some pressure off Jerry Judy in the middle of the field. Take some pressure off Cortland Sutton. Um, a big receiver punishing defensive backs in the backfield. But he's he's got to come in and he's got to be ready. Again, hamstring voodoo for sure. Um, I see – let me see. Here's where I started dropping in some. I'm going to scroll back down. We're running uh, just about out of time here. Lots of folks coming in. I apologize for uh skipping over you again and again as i come back and see the chat bots coming in dylan thank you again for being here because i never ever ever would have gotten to those um and they would have killed the chat um but who keeps the chat alive ethan does over in london says great show deacon and broncos country uh glad we have an early game this week hopefully to get rid of the bad taste you know it's it's nice it's it's nice after after something like that to turn around and focus um this isn't, you know, this isn't real life, but sometimes, you know, when something bad happens, it's nice to be able to focus on work or something like that. And, you know, this feels like that. This is real life to the players. You know, this is their, their livelihood, their jobs, and to have a new common enemy, a new focus, um, and get out there. And, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, I have no doubt Broncos country is going to support this team. You know, I, I was there. I was there when they weren't playing very well with San Francisco and Broncos country made that entire stadium shake on third downs. Um, I have no doubt that on Thursday night, the Broncos country is going to show up. And like I said, the, the Colts, we'll get more into it on Thursday morning when Nick's back, but the Colts are ready to pack it in. They really are. Um, popcorn coming in says I got the Colts winning. Uh, it's a three and a half point game. So, you know, not that's not a, a, a hot take. You know, the Colts could definitely come in and and win this one. Um, but they've got some injuries too. You know, uh, Shaq Leonard's out. He's been out because of uh, back surgery. Ouch. Uh, and then he comes in and gets gets a concussion his first game back. So, you know, it, it, one of their best players on defense. Jonathan Taylor, questionable. Um, he, he, uh, he didn't practice this week. 
uh, yesterday. DeForest Buckner uh, was full defensive tackle, really, really good player. And their center, Ryan Kelly, has been limited as well. They've got some injury, uh, some injury concerns as well. Um, on that note, I think that's probably got to do it. We're right at the hour mark. And um, glad my voice held up. The chat was super active today. Um, I see, you know, a bunch of likes, but before you get out of here, make sure you hit that like, uh, subscribe and share button. See if we can find more Broncos fans just like you to come in and, uh, and see what we all have to offer on mile high huddle. There's lots of voices, lots of different personalities, tons of shows. There should be something for everybody, whether it's the mile high legends, the dove Valley deep divers, the mile high insiders, or your gut reaction boys, the football priests, Chad and Zach. So, I am going to get out of here and I will be back tonight. I'll be behind the scenes, maybe jumping in on chat every so often because it is Tuesday, which means mile high insiders with Carl. I don't think Nick will be back. So it might be Carl and Thomas. It might be Carl and Luke. Let me Carl and somebody. So make sure you check them out tonight at six. Appreciate everybody being here. I have had a blast this morning. Um, we'll see you tomorrow on my channel, youtube.com slash C slash Scott Kennedy. We'll talk some more football. Mostly Falcons, but not just Falcons, of course. I'm, I'm too big a fan of the process, uh, the different players, personnel, general management aspect of this game to just stick to one team. That's why I'm here. So on that note, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tonight. And uh, have a good day, everybody. Look forward to, uh, to getting back out there and, and getting back on the field on Thursday.